This is a show that will blow your mind, but it might not. It all depends. Do you like breakfast and a book with a friend? Hello, everybody. As usual, let's do some spinning. Um, I'm here, ready to talk to you about goofy things, and obviously be goofy by doing the spinning, by being weird, by talking to the camera in my little breakfast nook. Um, this is what we got going on. Uh, hi Alex, hi Stouty, hi all the other peoples who are showing up. We are doing a breakfast and a book with Swallow. Let's do this over here so we can see how fun all my books are. Yeah. So um, today is breakfast and a book with Swallow. Uh, the food, just regular old oatmeal, except for, you know what? I got some maple syrup and I put it in there with the brown sugar. So now I have maple and brown syrup. Um, whatchamacallit? Oatmeal. Um, and butter. Because what kind of moron doesn't put butter in their oatmeal? People were weirded out that I didn't put... Oh man, that redhead had me scared for a minute. Thought you were MAGA for a second there. No. Harley Quinn. I'm wearing the hat because this is what's happening in the hair today. Maybe I should just keep it. You're right. We don't want people getting tricked. Harley Quinn. Um... It's a good thing I didn't have it backwards, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but my hair is outrageous, as you can see. Uh, apparently, I, I sweat it in the night. And, and obviously, the conceit of the show is that I'm getting up in the morning, making breakfast, and then talking to you guys about a book. And so my hair looks like what it looks like. Uh, but maybe that's not a great idea, you know what I'm saying, guys? Should I put the hat back on? No. No. Let's not do it. Okay, so one more bite of oatmeal, see how it is. Hmm. Came out good. So, today's book. Oh, a couple of cool news things, by the way. No cheating with the hats. <laughs> yeah. So, a couple of cool news things. Uh, I finally found a fan. Uh... Though the writing on the hat is backwards on the cam. Yeah, that's the other thing I was about to talk about right now. This is the good news. I found a, a CPU fan for my uh, laptop. So I will be able to use my laptop now to film these videos, which will then mean instead of seeing this backwards and having to figure out that it says A New Dawn by John Jackson Miller and obviously Star Wars, you will be able to just see it clearly. Uh, on my uh, laptop um, webcam thing with chat jigger yeah because um, it doesn't do the mirroring thing so pretty exciting guys um let's see so new don this first off I want to talk about John Jackson Miller this guy has written for uh, Marvel he did Crimson Dynamo Dynamo um, he's also done uh, Iron Man, um, Mass Effect comics, uh, and uh, a bunch of Star Wars and Star Trek books. Uh, the dude is, uh, is a powerhouse. He's written so many books since he started writing um, books. His first novel is A Knight Errant in 2011, and he is, I mean, like I said, he's a powerhouse. Since then, he's... he's He's done like 15 or 16 books, which is, it's bananas how many books he's put out. So he literally might just be writing eight hours a day uh, and working his butt off to do it. And he is a, 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 a nerd through and through because he, he also had a business running um, uh, like a comic book uh, uh, reviewing place and stuff like that. So this guy, John Jackson uh, Miller, is... Uh, uh, a nerd through and through. So it's kind of cool that he gets to write books uh, for Star Wars because uh, he is clearly a fan of Star Wars. 
So I will read uh, the back. Oh, also, not to brag, but this is an exclusive advanced reader's edition that I got from Comic-Con. You know, you know, just uh, got the Comic-Con and got this sweet, sweet uh, book uh, for, you know. Anyways, all right. So let's read the back. Obviously, it's a Star Wars book, so I'm just going to buy it. Uh, whereas normally when I go into a store, I will, um, I will look into... Um, uh, I will look into books and just check them out and be like, hmm, what's this one? And I'll read the back and then I'll read, open up in the middle if the back sounds cool. And if I like the front, maybe. Sometimes I'll look at the cover and I will judge a book by a cover. It is not signed, Stouty. Um, I would, did not get in line fast enough to get it signed. Otherwise, it would be. Yes, it's a fancy hoity-toity book. My friend Alex said that. So here we go. So this is the first Star Wars novel created in collaboration with the Lucasfilm story group Star Wars. A new dawn is set during the legendary dark times between episode 3 and five, uh, 4 and tells the story of how two of the lead characters from the animated series Star Wars Rebels first came to cross paths. Uh, it has a, a forward by Dave Filoni. You have three that are astounding, Stouty. Wow. Stouty has got signed books. Somebody else is hoity-toity over there. So... Here we go. Ever since the Jedi were marked for death and forced to flee Coruscant, Kanan Juris has devoted himself to staying alive rather than serving the Force. Wandering the galaxy alone from one anonymous job to another, he avoids trouble, especially with the Empire, at all costs. So when he discovers a deadly conflicting conflict brewing between ruthless Imperial forces and desperate revolutionaries, he's not about to get caught in the crossfire. Then the brutal death of a friend at the Empire's hand forces the ex-Jedi to make a choice. Bow down to fear or stand up and fight. But Jarrus won't be fighting alone. Unlikely allies, including a bomb-throwing radical, a former Imperial surveillance agent, and a, ven a vengeful security officer, and the mysterious Hera Syndulla, an agent provocateur with motives of her own, team up with Jarrus to challenge the Empire. As a crisis of apocalyptic proportions unfolds on the planet Gorse, they must stand together against one of the Emperor's most fearsome enforcers for the sake of a world and its people so yeah uh this book is intense and it is great guys uh the basic storyline uh is okay so he's working on a planet uh the empire shows up because they want more of this this stuff mined uh and the only way uh to do it is send this guy in to make him make the people more efficient and he's like mostly robot because he was um a rich dude he kept his brain his normal brain though anyways he's uh uh so he's sort of like it's it's interesting because it's also a, a kind of talk about corporate attitudes and how they view people as numbers and not as people i would argue that this was kind of like that because it's about the guy comes in and he's like well this isn't efficient so yeah just get rid of that guy but in the empire rules that means just kill them you know what i mean uh stouty says that's why i always remove the covers from my books less judging plus then they're all sexy and naked that is a good point uh alex says never judge a book by its cover Psh, yeah exactly you should sometimes judge a good book by its cover because you go Hey, that's a good cover. It has dragons on it. Maybe there's dragons in the book. Huh? Huh? How about that? You shouldn't judge people by what they look like. Like, if you judge Stouty, you'd be like, that guy is white trash and a crazy person. But he's not. A crazy person. Hey? Huh? Not that I can talk any trash. Um, so, let's open up to the book in the middle. And see what's going down, guys. Oh, should we start? No, we'll start it in the middle somewhere. Kanan had no shot. He winced as he saw Vidian raise his fists and lower them again and again. But before he could think again about the security chief's fate, the wayward hoverbus completed another revolution and was heading back for him and Hera. She saw it too and was already on her feet, holstering her blaster. Come on! Heedless, or heedless of the blaster bolts coming his way, Kanan bolted from the ground and followed. The smooth ride yawed wildly, slurred wildly toward them with a more altitude than it had before. Hera made a running leap for its underside. Kanan followed a second later. Hera was rewarded for acting first. 
She had hold of one of the support struts that made up the hover bus's chassis. Kanan, meanwhile, had only managed to hook his right hand around one of the rings attached to the rear turbofan, putting him right in the path of the straining engine's exhaust. The hovercraft pitched and fell again, nearly scraping the hangers on away from a horizontal obstacle. Kanan realized only afterward that it was the outer wall of the Imperial spaceport. They were on their way, somewhere. <laughs> uh, Stouty said, I do have a camper in my backyard now. Why trash level three achieved? Yes, that is uh, uh, definitely, especially because it's broken and doesn't work correctly. That especially makes it white trash. You're like, but I have it popped up. It, I can still sleep in it. Uh, Alex says, an agent provocateur sounds like a provocative, sexy agent. Um, well, she is very sexy, I would argue. Uh, she's a Twi'lek, um, and she's got the cool things, and she's like an athletic, sexy lady. I would I would argue that in the cartoon, she's very pretty. Her and um, Kanan eventually uh, make out a little bit and admit that they love each other. That's kind of cool. Uh, that's way down the road, though. Uh, if you haven't seen Rebels, I would suggest Rebels, by the way. Rebels is a great cartoon. Uh, it's fast-paced, fun, action-packed, uh, full of like emotional moments that you wouldn't guess they would have in something like that. So that's pretty cool. Um, and this book is full of political intrigue. Uh, uh, I would say social commentary on uh, the concept of uh, corporatism. And uh, the attitude of the attitude of the empire is such that you could definitely see like they're all about order, and by order they mean fascism and do things the way they say or die for it. So I think it's a great commentary on things that can be uh, happening now. Um, I would say, uh, and. Uh, especially because if you've ever worked in a corporate environment, you know that it isn't always fun. I mean, sometimes it's great. You got uh, benefits, um, you know, you, you, you got paid vacation, you got a 401k, all that stuff's pretty exciting. But also, uh, you're just a number. Uh, they'll fire you at any moment if they don't think you're productive enough. Uh, they'll fire you at any moment if they just need to make one person do four people's jobs because they that makes the stocks go up. Because they don't care about people. And... Uh, I think that's kind of painted in this. The Empire does not care about people. They care about order, and they care about things doing uh, the way they want it done. And of course, obviously, when the Emperor is in charge, they care about power. Ultimate power! Uh, Stouty says, but Ron, I thought Star Wars was just about fancy swords and space magic. Why do you use such fancy big words? Um, yeah, uh, it's not. Uh, and yes, it is also just a space opera. Is it as uh, well thought out and philosophical as Star Trek? Um, uh, I would I would argue that maybe it's not. Star Wars is, uh, but I'd also argue that maybe it is. Uh, when you really think about it, it can be. Uh, it's interesting. It's interesting because I would say that Star Trek is the kind of show that um, posits this positive future of exploration uh, of of us traveling to different places and learning about their cultures because we stay out of them we just observe we you know until they're ready to join the culture we just observe and enjoy their culture uh, learn about it appreciate it uh, food is just there uh, resources they don't exist you don't have to chase money to make sure that your rent is paid or anything like that because all that's taken care of uh, because science has gotten to the point that they don't need to worry about all that stuff so that is interesting right the food is made from this it just appears there that's amazing um but then star wars posits what might be arguably a more realistic idea the idea that what we're what we're experiencing in life is actually um uh a corporation, an empire full of basically space Nazis who are trying to uh, control people. Uh, I, I, you know, we, we always think about Star Wars as just a very simple space opera, and in some ways it is. It's a hero's journey. It's, it's a, a guy with a special talent having to hone that talent and get better and get more calm and get more patient, overcoming his fear and his anger to defeat uh, his 
own father. Uh, it's a, it's like, that's a story that's been told uh, multiple times, honestly. Uh, but it's also a story that makes a lot of sense. Everybody has to overcome their anger and their fear. Um, and in fact, I would argue uh, in this book, uh, that's one of the things Canaan has to start to, to, to face is not just his fear, uh, but uh, 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 choosing a destiny that helps people and makes a difference. Uh, and he does that in this book. Um, you would, I, I highly recommend this book. And after reading this guy's book and also realizing that I've read uh, another one of his books, just didn't realize it, uh, the Kenobi one, um, I would suggest 100% uh, that you read this book. Uh, Stouty says Star Wars has more layers than Star Trek. I don't know. I, it, it is arguable. I'm more a Star Wars fan than I'm a Star Trek fan. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, but I think, uh, I think, I think, arguably, Star Wars has more layers just because um, Star Wars wins. There, fix it for you nerds. I don't know. It's pretty close. They're both. They're both great. Um, and I, I love. I love the idea of what if we didn't need. What if we didn't need to compete for resources? If there was no competition for resources, what would life be like? Would you literally just be going out and learning all the time and growing and becoming better and better people and evolving? That That's that's a phenomenal thought. Um, it's not realistic for right now. That'll never happen. Um, Alex said, for the most part, I like reading books to escape reality, but I can definitely appreciate the more real aspects that mirror reality and make you think and relate, etc. Yeah, I I'm the same way. Normally I'll read a book to escape reality, but I love when you can throw in something in there that makes you think. Um, I try to do that with stand-up too. I always want to be funny. Funny is the first rule, uh, but I love to get to say something in my stand-up. Uh, I love to talk about social commentary, and sometimes you can talk about social commentary without even talking about it, just by telling a story uh, about how you treated someone nice when you didn't need to, or how uh, people treated other people bad, thought you were part of the group, and you're not. You know, all kinds of different ways uh, where you don't specifically talk about it, but you definitely have that in the background. Um, and Nerd Goat, our podcast that I do with Ed Greer and producer Bill, uh, we definitely have a... Uh, a a, a social commentary uh, through line through there. We don't mean to, it's just who we are as people. And it isn't blatant. We're not like out there talking about specific things most of the time, but it just comes through in our beliefs. So, <laughs> Stouty said, uh, I'd be breaking the holodeck's computers with my sick fantasies. Um, I think you'd just be making the holodeck happy for it getting to do creative, fun things. Um, it'd probably have to create something real for you though. Uh, like, uh, like it did for the um, uh, the challenging data and uh, during the Watson, the Doctor, um, uh, the Sherlock Holmes episode of Star Trek Next Generation. Uh, anyways, uh, I guess that's about it, guys. I just wanted to remind you uh, out here in the quarantine, be safe, be careful, do your social distancing, wear your mask outside, listen to the experts, and also listen to uh, the majority of experts. Don't listen to two or three morons who think they're experts who make weird videos with conspiracy theories. Please, stop doing that stuff. It'll, it's a waste of your time. Hi, Carol. I'm sorry you're coming in at the end. Uh, Monday, I'm going to do uh, Orson Scott Card. Uh, today, I did Star Wars. Um, I did this book, Star Wars, A New Dawn by John Jackson Miller. Um, Great author, great book, and I love the Star Wars universe, as you all know. Star Wars shirt on right now, hair out of control, oatmeal is on point. I spit on my hand, guys. I apologize for that. I'm going to edit this out. No, I'm not. Uh, Stouty says if they don't have a YouTube show, then they're not an expert. Yeah, that's what's so funny is just people, people watch, look. I don't know. I'm, I, I guess I'm going to be straightforward here. When you watch a documentary on YouTube, I can make a documentary and put it on YouTube. I can edit it and make it look like it's factual. I could convince you of a lot of things using editing and uh, what I like to call gobbledygook talk. That's where you say a bunch of words that sort of make sense. 
um, sound very convincing and then convince people uh, that something that's not true is totally true. Uh, it's not hard and con artists do it all the time uh, because they like attention. So, you know, think about, do some critical thinking. If, 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 if more than one place, if there's only three places on the entire internet saying that this thing is true and it all comes from one source and it's a wackadoo who put up a YouTube video who's trying to sell a book, maybe, maybe do yourself a favor and just ignore that video. Maybe watch it for entertainment's sake, uh, but don't necessarily think it's the truth. Uh, anyways, back to what I was saying. Star Wars, A New Dawn, John Jackson Miller. I said it a few times, but I want to get it out there. This guy's great. Get all of his books. Support his stuff because it's it's fantastic. It's fast paced. The action's great. Uh, he's uh, his description's great. He's his sci-fi is so interesting and so well written. Um, it's just it's it's just a blast. And this has the feel of Star Wars 100%. You cannot get more Star Wars feeling than this book, honestly. It's great. So, do yourself a favor, pick up this book for the quarantine, get it sent to your house if you wanna do the physical copy. If you don't, put it on your Kindle, read it on your phone, and enjoy catching up on your reading because you have the opportunity to do it. Um, and if you're a creative type, uh, make, make some videos, write something, do it, because you have the time. Um, Stouty says, I feel like we solved a lot of issues today. Good show, Ron. Thank you, Stouty. Uh, Alex says, uh, gobbledygook talk is basically advanced baby talk. People research and yay. Star Wars never read any of his stuff. Okay, well, that's cool. Um, I didn't get to read all of that because it went by. Hold on, let's fix that. Gobbledygook talk is basically advanced baby talk. So yes, people, research, and yay, Star Wars. Never read any of his stuff. Never read any of his stuff. You should. He's great. Um, he's read, he's written a lot of books, Star Trek, Star Wars, uh, Mass Effect. Uh, he also wrote for Dark Horse, a bunch of different, uh, comics and stuff like that. Uh, Carol Neal wrote The Truth, LOL. Yeah, that's the thing is they, they're like, you don't understand the truth. I know a guy who knows a guy who knows another guy who told me the truth. Okay. Sorry. I'm going off on rants. I've got to end this video now. Um, like I was saying, get out there, read books. If you're a creative type. Create something. Make it happen. You can do it. You've got the time. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm putting together a YouTube video uh, uh, with me talking about books, which may sound weird, but it's something I love to do. And I think a lot of people love to read books and would like to hear um, about different books. So that's the goal of this uh, video series is to inspire people to get out there and read some books. I'm also going to do another series with my lady. Uh, called uh, Positive Spin, where we take movies and we talk about the positive parts about them. We don't tell you the negative parts. Because you know what? One of the things I realized is people work their butt off to make movies. And sometimes, yes, do movies deserve criticism when they're bad? Absolutely. But one of the things I want to see is us talking about the positive aspects of each movie. Because every movie has a positive aspect. I guarantee it. So you can go to my YouTube channel to look out for that soon. And then also you can check out Nerd Goat Podcast um, and reboot it on YouTube. Nerd Goat is obviously on iTunes or wherever you get podcasts. Reboot it is on YouTube. Nerd, Nerd Goat is where we talk about people's favorite fictional character. Reboot it. We take movies that no one wants rebooted and we reboot them and we make them good. And I promise you, you will love that, that, that YouTube show. It is great. Um, and then that's about it. Oh, if you want to support... You go to nerdgoat, uh, patre patreon.com slash nerdgoatpodcast. You can get extra podcasts from Ed and I, um, and that's how you can directly support Ed and I. Uh, it uh, literally paid uh, half my rent this month. So thank you all out there who support uh, Nerdgoat uh, and me, and may you all have a nice, fun day filled with reading and learning. Hmm. Bye, guys.